starts our summer series okay <laughs> uh, thanks to um, our panelists today we appreciate the four rats and perhaps one of them will explain rats to you but um, I will preempt them a little bit for six months of entering uh, freshmen so to speak at VMI go through and I would call it an indoctrination period, but it simply uh, military discipline. It's an, uh, an opportunity to uh, have the administration at VMI uh, point the young cadets in the right direction with strict military discipline. It's combined with physical and academic demanding environment for these guys. And after uh, six months or so of being a rat, then uh, they move forward in their class. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, oh, let me back up a minute. The program today and future programs, since we are not confined to quarters, uh, will be in the auditorium. And we will record the program and put it on the Katy video gallery for those who would like to uh, get a second look at it or perhaps didn't get a chance to be here today. The, you all, uh, many of you may know a lot about v, I mean, the VMI. Uh, many of you may know very little. My home was in Arkansas for 50 plus years, and we moved to Virginia. To be very honestly, I had never heard of VMI until I arrived in Virginia, and I ran into the thickest fraternity of individuals I have ever met in my life that uh, all of them are uh, graduates of VMI, and I mean, talk about tight brothers. They are tight brothers. Um, quickly, VMI, uh, our Virginia Military Institute, is a public senior <coughs> military college in Lexington, Virginia. It was founded in 1839 as America's first state military college. And it is the oldest public senior military college in the United States. In keeping with its founding principles, unlike many other senior military colleges, VMI enrolls only cadets. 
and it awards bachelor's degrees exclusively. It offers its students, all of whom are cadets, strict military discipline, physical and academic challenges. The Institute grants degrees in 14 disciplines, engineering, science, liberal arts, and all of these uh, cadets are required to participate in the U.S. Armed Forces ROTC Reserve Officers Training Corps. As of 2019, because 2020 was so messed up with enrollments and what have you, but as of 2019, the Institute had an enrollment of 1,722 cadets, and today, as in the 1800s, cadets sleep on cots, they live close together in a Spartan and austere barracks, and I see some of these guys smiling about that right now. Uh, all of them are in the Armed Forces ROTC. When they graduate, they do have an option of going into the various military branches, or if they desire, they can pursue civilian-type careers. Their alumni, or the alumni from uh, the VMI, include the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, the current Secretary of Army, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, seven Medal of Honor recipients, 13 Rhodes Scholars, Pulitzer Prize winners, Academy Award winners, and Emmy Award winners, Golden Globe winners. I knew they were actors, but they knew they were the actors. <laughs> uh, senators and representatives, governors, Lieutenant Governor of Supreme Court Justice, numerous college and university presidents and CEOs, business leaders across the board, and 290, 290 general and flag officers across all of the U.S. military branches. Our guest today, who will share with you some of their reflections and Editorially, I have asked them not to comment about the current politics at VMI. If you're a uh, current paper reader or a periodical reader, we'll leave that for your one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, I guess today all successful in their fields, or they simply wouldn't be here, uh, from the class of 1953, the youngster of the bunch, Bob Frag. Bob, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, Bob had a career as a local lawyer. All right, Don Combs. Don, raise your hand. Thank you. Don was uh, successful in public finance. Uh, George Henning. Okay. George was orthopedic surgeon in this area, and Charles Downs. Charles is our Virginia Lutheran Home Corporate Council uh, right now, works across the street for all of us. Uh, so guys, I'm gonna let you go at it. Uh, I'll start with the kid of the bunch, uh, Charles, if you will, and they're gonna each share for a few minutes some of their reflections and then will uh, have a little bit of time when they finish for a rebuttal. <laughs> uh, well, first, thank you, Buster, for this kind invitation. Um, it is an absolute honor and privilege to speak to you all and to share uh, the front of this room with such distinguished alumnus <coughs> from VMI. There's a Sesame Street does a bit when they teach kids and they sing a song that says which one of these isn't like the other and I feel like I'm that one that's not like the other I don't have such a distinguished background as you all so thank you for letting me share the stage with you um, I graduated VMI in 1994 and in November of 2012 18 years after my graduation, my mother passed away. 
And I went, uh, of course, we had the funeral in a church. And as you looked out into the church, two pews were filled with a contingency of my brother rats. They were in naval uniform, some were in suits. We call that civilian clothes or civvies at VMI. Some had sent families to represent them. Uh, mothers of my brother rats had come to her funeral. And that was what sparked me in this reflection to ask, what about VMI engenders that loyalty, that response of 18 years after I graduate, that there's this turnout uh, for me and to support me like family, because it really is like a family. And I, I think back and I think a lot of what causes that is what we all went through as rats and those challenges. So your first year at VMI is called your rat year. And it does last about six months and you have to walk a certain line in barracks called the rat line. You have to strain, which means your shoulders are back and your chin's in. I will never do it because I did it so much as a rat. Uh, first classmen are seniors. They can ask you. Could, they can tell you to do push-ups if you don't know certain information. Like you've got to know uh, what is for breakfast that day or what is for lunch. And as a rat, if you don't know it, you're supposed to do 20 push-ups and. One of, the, one of the times, uh, it was a Saturday and it was a football game and I was excited, I was gonna see my parents and this upper class we came up and said, Rat, what's for dinner? I had no idea. So I yelled as loud as I could, pizza and beer, sir. And he made me do 20 push-ups. So <laughs> it, it, it is that kind of, that's part of what you start doing as a rat. And, and, and it, when you're at VMI, you're in uniform all the time when you're on post. We call the campus post. And you're on uniform, you have to stay in your uniform all the time. And every Friday, we have a formal parade. And as a rat, you have to go, your uniform has to look crisp. And everybody has a challenge at VMI, I, I think. Mine was military bearing. They'd say right face, I'd go left. Uh, it, it, your shoes had to be shined to a mirror shine. Mine kind of looked like one of those mirrors you see in the antique store on Route 11, you know, kind of cloudy, you can't really see much in them. Well, we had a big parade. There was a very distinguished army general coming that we were gonna parade for. And I went to my room to get ready and I had forgotten to get my laundry bag. So all I had for briefs to go under my white pants were boxers that had a picture of Fred Flintstone. <laughs> and he was pink. So I put my white pants on and it's a gray blouse and I went to the mirror and I said, okay, you can't see Fred Flintstone. I'm going to get away with this. Went down, formed up with my company and I look in the sky and it's getting a little gray. I said, well, they always cancel parades when it rains, so I'm okay. But this was this Army General, so we step off. And when you step off, that means parade starts. And we march out on the parade deck, and we're in formation, and I feel the first drop of rain on my face. I said, hmm. And then all of a sudden, downpour. And I hear this laughter from my company. And all of a sudden I hear, Downs, what in the world is on your pants? Well, as a rat, you don't cut your eyes. You don't look and look at somebody and say, hey, what, what? You just stay facing forward. So then we got the announcement that we had to return to barracks because it was raining too much. So I cut my eyes down. Right on my right cheek is Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Clear as day. We marched back into barracks. I got worked out. I had to do so many push-ups. All my brother rats came to support me 
because they got such a great laugh out of it that we were all doing push-ups and getting worked out. I, they made me throw the Fred Flintstone underwear away. But it's those kinds of challenges that repeat itself uh, throughout VMI. That some, of course, are self-inflicted, uh, my uniform issues. But every single person, I think, that goes through VMI has to overcome those challenges. You, you learn quickly at VMI that during challenging times, you focus what's in your control. And you learn quickly that what's in your control is your attitude, your effort, and your response. Your attitude and effort and response are gonna dictate what you do in those challenging times. And it's a constant refrain, and you'll hear it from alumni, that when they come into a challenging time, an ill spouse, a, a, a mother that uh, is, is struggling with Alzheimer's, a loss of a job, that when we talk, you'll hear alumni say, well, it's another rat line. It's just another rat line. Learn to do what's in your control and focus on what you can do. So it is, um, it's an interesting place. I want to take a moment, just a personal reflection I was not a legacy at VMI. My father didn't go, my grandfather didn't go, but I had a great friend named Edward Henning, who I was best friends with in high school. We got into so much trouble, much of Edna Henning's gray hair came from us, I believe. <laughs> but his father, George, and his mother, Edna, drove me to VMI football games when I was in high school and nurtured that interest that sparked in me. That interest didn't spark just then while I was a cadet. Dr. Henning and Mrs. Henning supported me during my cadetship. Um, and I'm proud to say now that my son Chaz is going to matriculate to VMI in August. And he will have a legacy, and he'll be able to say that his dad was class of 1994. But that legacy is as much George's legacy as it is mine. It may not be familiar, but it's a legacy nonetheless. So I want to thank you for that, because I'm so excited to see my son Chaz take those first steps to those life lessons that VMI has instilled in me and I think a lot of us. So Buster, thank you for this time. I greatly appreciate it. I can't thank you all enough for letting me share a little bit of the stage with you all. And uh, I look forward to hearing, on, hearing your reflections. Very good, Charles. Very good, Charles. Oh, green light. There it is. Very good, Charles. Uh, uh, I don't think you actually thanked me very much uh, in September that year. No, no. <laughs> Not more <laughs> penalty tours. That's right. Do you know, uh, penalty tours are something that other people should march. <laughs> well, my first day uh, at uh, BMI, four of us from the old Jefferson High School uh, drove up. Uh, Pete Roberts, Billy Red, Barry Onder. Warned off to myself, and we got dropped off uh, with uh, a, a small suitcase, maybe a duffel bag. One person asked, "What should my kid bring?" And they said, "Oh, maybe a toothbrush." And uh, as far as personal uh, uh, belongings, anyway, uh, we uh, met down in the big gym and uh, met with uh, the academic people. We signed in in the book and. Uh, they had the book turned uh, to uh, General Patton's name, and he's a, a former uh, student. He uh, didn't graduate. He went to BMI one year and went to West Point. The next person that they showed us was George Marshall, who was Eisenhower and MacArthur's boss in World War II. Uh, getting back to my experience, uh, after, after I signed in, uh, uh, we uh, sort of walked up in a little group and then they lined us up uh, entering the barracks out of sight of uh, any of our parents and uh, um, they commenced uh, to uh, start yelling and giving us a hard time and uh, 
don't turn your head, Brad. Uh, uh, look ahead. What do you want to do? Buy this place? And uh, uh, we heard several several things like that. And uh, uh, we went up to our room uh, to say the rooms are uh, uh, are are Spartan. Uh, 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 maybe maybe they're slightly more than Spartan. My my room had uh, three. Uh, mattress rolls in it that uh, were to be put up every, every morning before breakfast and uh, gotten down after taps at uh, about uh, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, uh, anyway, then, they, then there's four uh, uh, sort, of, sort of cot springs made out of wood and uh, uh, we, we had them. I had a locker that uh, held uh, my underwear and uh, uh, personal uh, uh, garments. I had uh, one hang-up hook for my uh, bathrobe and uh, uh, probably four feet of uh, uh, places that I could hang my uh, uniforms in. And uh, the uh, first uh, meal was a uh, real rush, you go down to the mess hall and they're yelling and screaming at you. If the upperclassman uh, had emptied his glass, he banged it, pitch it at the rat sitting closest to the uh, water pitcher. And uh, it's certainly early, early in the year, there was a lot of glass breaking, <laughs> <laughs> as you could imagine. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, one thing I, I want to concentrate on is your dike. When you get ready for parade, it's called diking out. You have uh, cross pieces and a uh, uh, leather ammunition box on, on the back of your belt. And uh, your dike is usually a senior or a junior. That would be a first classman second classman and uh, mine was a second class we had an unusually uh, uh, large rat class and uh, he uh, went to MCV to medical school after his third class year and the first thing he did with me was we went out uh, the first day of classes after the cadre period which which lasts about four or five days and uh, Anyway, uh, uh, he took me to the library and we went up to the second floor and there's a bunch of tables a little larger than this and he sat me down at one of them and said if uh, you're not here by 7.30 every night, it's your, you can imagine. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, uh, I sat in that chair for four years because when he went to medical school, I was afraid he might drive up uh, from <laughs> Richmond and, 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 and see that that seat was uh, empty. And uh, uh, fast forwarding to uh, my uh, boys, I would ask him every now and then, uh, uh, what did you do tonight? They said, we had an X check. And I said, what the hell is an X check? He said, oh, well, you, you, we go to the PX. What, you want to figure out whether it was still there or anything? I think in my entire cadetship, I probably went there 20 times. And, you know, if I was out of toothpaste or, or uh, something, something like that. Uh, uh, but uh, things, things do, uh, do change a little bit. We had a fairly, if you can say, it, it wasn't a nice first semester, but the football team for the first time practically ever was nationally ranked. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, core in four years saw two losses in Roanoke to the Hokies. And, and that was it. We uh, beat Virginia four years in a row. We beat William and Mary four years in a row. Richmond and well, the whole, the whole Southern uh, Conference. And uh, so we got out of the rat line every every uh, time they did that. Well, when it was time for us to get out of the rat line in the spring, uh, I, I think they added all those weeks back on <laughs> because we literally got out probably the, for the first dance of finals or something like that. But uh, 
uh, it uh, uh, it was it was it was interesting. Uh, there, BMI claims they have a three-legged stool. It's academics, athletics, uh, and uh, uh, the military. And uh, uh, I was proud that, that I got a commission uh, when I uh, graduated. I uh, went to medical school, and, and where, I, where I met Edna, and apparently she'll tell the story that she used to ride down with the girl that I uh, dated when I was a cadet <laughs> from Mary Washington. But, but anyway, uh, it uh, uh, was an interesting uh, year. It, it, it's more fun being an upperclassman uh, than, than a rat, and, and uh, Charles uh, really was very fortunate. I think his last year or so, he was the voice of VMI at the parade, so uh, so he didn't have to march out there. You know. I got to announce the parade, and, and that's wonderful until you have allergies, and you forget to turn the microphone off, and you go, and the whole of Lexington hears that you have allergies. So, yeah. needless to say, his son gave me a uh, grief for that for about two months. So, yeah. but uh, but anyway, and the thing that you paid your night back was you picked up his uh, laundry and uh, uh, kept his, kept his room relatively straight. They were, uh, and probably the, the highlight of our week, two of us diked in that room and there was uh, three upperclassmen. One of them uh, uh, was uh, a upper class privilege was going uptown on Wednesdays and uh, he visited the bars and Harrison uh, 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 Gailey, and Gailey Harrison and I uh, had to uh, drag him out to ranks. And, and deposit them where uh, I think what there's the, the, you know, as serious as BMI is, there's a lot of fun, and it, it, it's of course more fun, more fun when you're a, a sophomore, junior, and senior than ever. Thank you. Well, I thought I'd get ready for this meeting. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> At any rate, my name is Don Coombs, and I matriculated from Albany, New York in uh, August of 1953 uh, at BMI. Uh, and we made our trek down there that day in August. I have not, I had not really heard too much about VMI. I knew that it was somewhat comparable to West Point because I was somewhat close to West Point. I wanted a military school. I needed a military school. So I was going there. But I had no idea in the world what it looked like. They didn't communicate too well at that time. At any rate, as we got down into Lexington, Virginia and crossing the Maury River, I said to my mom in the front seat, I said, gee, there's a penitentiary in town, and I meant it. <laughs> that was VMI. <laughs> my parents wanted to take me out for lunch before I actually got out of the car and matriculated. I said, no, I'm sure we'll have a nice dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> After matriculating in that day and at dinner, all hell broke loose. Now I'm in the rat line. Whoa, rat, what's your name? Coombs, D.H., Albany, New York. Drive over here. Drive over here, rat. Your chin's flapping in the air. You look like you're giving birth to a nation. Suck it up. Who won the war, rat? Now that was a perplexing question to me because I was from the North. I really didn't give too much of a hoot about the Confederacy. So I said the United States. I thought he was meaning he, he meant World War II. Anyway, I learned, and I learned that. I was, uh, I like to say I was uh, 
battalion commander my rat year of the window closing detail in Paris. <laughs> These old windows, uh, the cadets really in the morning, because Reveille was at six o'clock, they didn't really like to get up and close their own window, so they devised a, uh, a system whereby the rats would arrive between five and five thirty and go around, and all the other three stoops, we were on the fourth, all the other stoops, and close their windows. I also had uh, a paper route, uh, and I also had a laundry route. Um, there were a lot of menial things that um, you know I didn't really realize too much about until I, I got to that school that first year. And it's Alley Charles, our rat line was nine months. <laughs> we came in in August and we got out on May 15th. The, uh, throughout my cadetship, I, I played athletics, I played basketball and baseball the four years that I was there. Uh, I graduated and was commissioned on 11 June 1957, which was uh, 64 years ago last week. I thought I might now just veer into a couple incidents that, uh, that I remember. And really, in six minutes, you can't tell all the incidents. It takes practically a lifetime to explain everything. But the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving game with VPI and, and uh, VMI was something to behold. And I think most of you people out here that are long time Roanoke people know that. It was especially tough for rats because they were on hokey patrol for one week prior to that game. Uh, in my rat year, uh, one uh, uh, event took place that I'm not too happy about, but nevertheless it did, and we paid for it dearly. I think it was some of the first classmen got in, broke into, through the Hokey or the VMI patrol over in uh, Blacksburg, and got in and painted the War Memorial red, white, and yellow. We heard about that big time, and our quartermaster account was charged accordingly. Nevertheless, uh, it was done. It was done in good fun. Everything with VMI, VPI at that time was done in good fun. They swiped our, uh, kidnapped our kangaroo, which was a mascot. We kidnapped one of them one year and released him at halftime. At any rate, those were great days. And and I'm sorry to see the Victory Stadium is, is gone. And I remember so fondly that first Thanksgiving because I think after I got off that bus, my roommate and I went over and had one Thanksgiving Day meal at something like 10 o'clock in the morning. We had another one in the early afternoon and then we had another one in the evening before we left. The other uh, event that, that uh, happened, uh, and I think it, it's an appropriate place to mentioned it, seeing Cal sitting over there. He was WNL 58. I don't know whether he, is, he was in the fraternity or not, but the VMI in those days had to march to church on Sunday. And uh, we had a couple companies marching out all the way up to uh, uptown. Uh, ours went to the Presbyterian Church and others went to the various denominations. From time to time on uh, Sunday morning, the uh, Fraternity brothers, or this fraternity that was down at the uh, bottom of the hill that we marched uh, down and then on, on, on up to Lexington, he used to get out and harass us uh, uh, pretty much from their party the night before. But this particular event, I remember distinctly because they threw empty beer cans at us. Uh, the company behind us not ourselves, we continued to go. The company behind us uh, broke ranks, went into the fraternity house and trashed it. <laughs> um, I've talked with Cal about that. I'm still not sure whether he was a member of that fraternity, but you know, he's a mink, and the minks uh, were WNL um, uh, students. And the reason that they were called minks was that they uh, enjoyed uh, trying to escort the cadets Dates after the cadets were returning to barracks. So there was no, uh, you know, happiness with them. 
there's a, another event, one of my dumbest things there, but I'm not going to go into it at this particular time, but that's when I violated room confinement twice in an hour and spent <laughs> damn near half my connection under confinement. So, next. <laughs> Buster mentioned the, the rats and the rat line and all that. Rat, rat, rat line means different things to different people. For instance, these distinguished gentlemen here, all three of them will always be rats to me. They were, they were rats when I knew of them, I guess they'll always be rats. You know, I didn't realize it at the time, but when I went to VMI in uh, September of 19. 49. Uh, VMI was an all male, all white school. Um, people have questioned for years whether the rather harsh and restrictive treatment <coughs> inflicted upon the rats we call them was, a, was beneficial or to the educational system or not. But I don't think it, it's never done in any. Anybody in the credit can be about it has not done any, any harm. It's always it's been a good thing. I have two sons, one of whom wisely decided not to go to VMI, <laughs> and he did very well. My oldest son went to VMI, graduated as a chemistry major, uh, went on to establish a large chemical company in Salem, recently sold it to the Japanese for, for mega bus, and now I'm looking at some place to go for a vacation. They asked me where should, where, where should I go, and I said, "Son, go to go to Norway. That's always been my most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life." My brother Wright class at VMI was the class of '53, but I was out for a year. I had a case of the polio, luckily a mild case, and I did graduate to '54. During my rat year at VMI, I was awakened about 3 o'clock in the morning along with all the other cadets to the sound of the rolling of the drums. And the entire cadet corps had to get up, leave their rooms, go out, look down on the courtyard below. And in the courtyard, was the honor corps was assembled with the cadets standing in the middle of them. They announced that the cadet had just been found guilty of an honor court offense, and he would be leaving at that time, and his name would never be mentioned again. Well, that's been the tradition for years up there, still is, and it's only changed to the extent that the courts have decided it was a little too humiliating for that guilty cadet to be there. So when that takes place now, he's already gone. But the system is still basically the same. Now, your first year of MI, your roommates are assigned. You don't know who you're going to be with. Now, I don't know how that works now because they've got girls up there. I, I don't imagine I would be assigned to a room with some girls, but well, there's life, there's hope, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable events each year at VMI, as has already been mentioned, used to be the VMI VBI football game, Thanksgiving Day in Northern Virginia. That was a big deal. And that went on for years. It, it has to happen now in 20 or 30 years, mainly because during that period of time, while VMI only increased its size by about 200 people, uh, VPI went from 10,000 to 30,000. So they, they just outgrew us. We couldn't keep up with them. VMI has had many distinguished graduates. Perhaps the most distinguished that may come to, to your mind is General George Marshall, who achieved the very high, the highest rank you can get in the military. He went from VMI to later become the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So that's that's going to be hard for anybody to ever top. My military career was in the Air Force, which
which I thoroughly enjoyed. I flew the F-105, which was the fastest plane in the world at low level, and the F-4 Phantom, which was the fastest plane in the world at high level, which would, would poke along at 2.4 times the speed of sound. That's what's known as a moving on. What I learned at VMI had served me particularly well, both in the Air Force and in my um, four-year study at Devonell Law School and in my 30-year um, practice of law at Salem. Thank you. Long live VMI. Buster, I'd like to clarify one thing. Uh, Don Combs has been kind enough to accuse me of a, multiple, a multitude of things. First of all, I did not uh, enter WNL at 19, uh, one year after you did. I started in 57 when you graduated because I heard you were no longer going to be in town. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, the uh, fraternity that you talked about, I joined because they were looking for somebody to clean up. <laughs> and I didn't have a scholarship, so I needed the money. And the trophies are the most destroyed looking set of honors that I've ever encountered. And lastly, I want to tell you that the uh, movement to remove the statue of Stonewall Jackson from the campus at VMI came to my attention because the VMI authorities came to WNL and said, can we put this statue on your property? <laughs> And the people at WNL were smart enough to say, no, we can't do that. But we'll let him hang our, his clothes, his civvies, in our closets. <laughs> 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 Very quickly, uh, any of the panel have any closing comment? All right, uh, we're not going to open for uh, question and answer simply because uh, our, our time, but uh, the guys had commented about the honor code at VMI. Probably the most revered and cherished uh, one of the one of the constituent items of of the core. Uh, Do you guys remember the motto of the honor code? Charles, would you, as a closing, would you lead your fellow rats in that motto? Well, it, it's very simple. A, a cadet does not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. All right, you guys say it all together. <laughs> a cadet does not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate, or steal, or tolerate, or tolerate those, those who do. If you have further questions for the distinguished rats, then. Uh, They'll be open for questions as we close the meeting. Thank you for participating in this report.